In this video, we're going to briefly talk about components. Now, I've already covered a bit of components with you, explaining what they are and how they interact with Unity and they create objects. But this time, I'm actually going to show you how we can create some similar objects using components. So in the scene right now, I still have the shapes from the last video. And if we look at one such as the square, we can see that we have a transform component. We've already talked about how every object will have a transform and then we have a sprite render, and that's all we have for components here. So what actually makes this game object a square is this sprite renderer component, and then the sprite that's in this box here. So I'm gonna create a new empty object. Now, this is a keyboard shortcut that I find really handy. This is one that's gonna save you a lot of time down the road, so I wanna get you in the habit of using it as early as possible, just so it becomes natural. So if we want to create a new empty game object, we can right click in here. We can go to create empty and that's going to create this empty game object. So I'm just going to press escape to, to get out of the rename and I'm just going to delete while it's highlighted. So delete on the keyboard. Now what you can do is hold control shift and then press the letter N like November. And that's going to automatically create us an empty game object. As you progress, you're going to be making a lot of game objects all the time. So I find this keyboard shortcut very handy. So now we can just put a name. I'm going to put custom square. And now we have an empty game object. What I want to do is I'm going to set the transform to be back at the center. So right at zero, zero. So if I click these three little dots, I can select reset. Now it's going to set them all back to the center. But right now we have nothing to actually show our object in here. It's just an empty game object. So what I can do is if I look at square, remember we see sprite renderer on here. If we go back to our custom square, we can just click add component. And now in here I can browse through all the components or I can just type in the search box here. So if I start typing sprite, if I look through it, there's multiple different sprite things. We want a sprite renderer. So if I select that, notice I have the component, but there's nothing in the scene yet and that's because we have no sprites set. So for this box, if I had a sprite set up in my, my assets down here in the project, I could just click and drag it in, but I don't have any yet. Unity does have a bunch of built-in sprites that you can use. So if we click this little icon next to the sprite box, we can browse through all the different sprites that are in our project. These are all sprites from different packages that Unity already has installed, but we can select anything that's in here. So you can browse through and we could just select one. So let's say I wanted to use this red icon here. Now, if I select that, you can see my sprite now has that. And it's a very small sprite. So if I wanted, I could scale it up. So if I hit R on the keyboard for the scale tool and then just start clicking and dragging. Now I start getting a bigger sprite and it looks a bit blurry because that, that icon was so small and we're scaling it up. Another way we can do it is if we look in our assets folder here, we could drag any sprite that we have in here. We don't actually have any in our project yet, but Unity does have a bunch built in, all the ones for the sprites that we created. So in this case, I'm just going to packages here and yours may not show this depending what packages you have installed. That That's fine. This is just for a reference. You don't have to follow this exactly. I'm just showing you for right now. So if I start browsing through this pack here, now I don't exactly remember which folder it's in. So if I go to the square that we already created, if I wanna know where this object is that's in here, I can just click on it and it's gonna take me right to it. So you can see here, now we have the square. So I could select our custom square, take this square and drag and drop it in here. And now we have a square. And then I could scale that back down to one. And now we have a one unit square, which is the exact same thing if we right click 2D object, sprites, and square. Now that example was with a sprite, but say I wanted something else. So say the main camera, this is the exact same concept. So if I wanted to, I could hit again, the, sh the keyboard shortcut, control shift N that creates a new game object. 
I'm just going to name this custom camera. Now I'm just going to reset the transforms just so it's back at the center. And this is just a habit to get into. That way your object's always at the origin when you create it. And then you move it around after that. So now we have an empty camera object with just a transform. But if we go to add component, if I start typing camera, we can see this camera component. Now if I add that, now we have a camera. So if we look at the game window now, notice all of our, our shapes are gone. That's because the, the game tab is trying to use this camera now. So if I delete the original camera, if you look, you can see this is the output of the main camera. You know what? I'm not going to delete it. Let's just uncheck it up here to disable it. Let's go to our custom camera. And now we have to move our camera to bring all of this into view. So one thing I could do is I could look on here and let's see what settings our main camera has. So it has a size of five and this projection type is set to orthographic. So we need to set those the same. Another thing you can do with components is let's go to our main camera. If I look at the component here, if I click these three little dots, you can see copy component. So if I select that, and if I go to custom camera, I can click on the camera here and we can put paste component values. And now this is going to change all of the settings of this component to match the main camera. So now we have this, but if you look at our custom camera, we still don't see anything in it. And if we go to the game view, we don't see anything. Now the reason for that is not all of these settings, but our actual transform. So let's do the same with the main camera. I'm going to select it. I'm going to click the three dots on the transform, copy. And in this one, it gives you the option of what you want to copy. So what we want here is the position. And that's going to copy these three settings. Let's go back to our custom camera. Let's paste them. And now that camera is back to the same spot as the main camera, but this is our own custom camera. And now I can start moving it around and we see it, it changes. If we look at the game view, we see our objects. Now, a lot of the stuff I covered in this lesson, because you're not actually doing it on your own yet, you may not fully understand it, but I wanted to cover it right now. So when we start working with this, you understand what we're doing right at the start and nothing's a real surprise. So you, you may not be fully comfortable with the process yet until you start doing it on your own. What I would suggest if you want is to just go for a little bit, try to make some different objects, try to recreate the camera like I did, try to make a new light. So just play around a bit. And when you're done, you can just delete the objects out of the hierarchy here and we don't need them. And speaking of which, before we go to the next one, let's just enable our main camera again. And I'm just going to select all of these so I can select the first one and then hold down shift and click on the last one. It's going to select all of these objects now. So when you hold shift and you click, it's going to select everything in between the one that's currently selected, which is here and the one you click on. So now with all of them selected, just hit the delete key and now they're all gone. We don't need those objects anymore. And remember to hit control S to save your scene. And now we have a saved scene, all of our objects are gone and we're ready to go on to the next video.